He came home and he said, I have just been offered the opportunity of a lifetime. It was a small business at the time. If you look back at the risks that he took financially, I don't think a lot of people would do it. Well, it's way bigger and better than I ever hoped and dreamed. I went to Michigan, University of Michigan, in engineering college. I took off for Ann Arbor in uh, the fall of 1965 uh, with no money and got to school. In 1966, I met my wife, Beverly. I went to Purdue and I got my Master's of Science in Industrial Administration, and that was in 1971. I'm used to now at this point, after all this experience, being able to, to implement things and ideas that I knew would work. And so I go to these companies and I identify these problems and I'd write them up and tell them if you fix this or fix that, you're gonna save this or save that. He was uh, familiar with going into a business and turning around. In the summer of 85 in August, John Lindell, this banker guy, called me up and he said, I've got some companies here that I need some help with. We got a deal this time for you that maybe you want to go uh, get involved in personally and, and help us out here. Now, here's the deal. It's on a Monday and you need to go out and you need to look at two operations. And we got to make a decision by Thursday because the closing date for the whole deal is on Friday. At the time, they also had this little tiny company out in Richmond, Virginia, which was a subsidiary of a company called Super Radiator. And the main company has got this product called a coil. It's a heat transfer surface, and it's all about engineering and thermodynamics and psychometrics and that kind of stuff. I remember them very vividly, very vividly. And he said, uh, I can see that they're problems, but it's nothing I haven't seen before. And so he said, I, you know, I think we should do it. I remember his jobs up to Super Radiator, and then Super Radiator, you could tell, was special. My dad purchased the business when I was nine, and so Super Radiator has kind of been in our family since I can almost remember. I was pretty young when dad bought the business. Looking back now, he was 39, and that was just an amazing leap of faith for him and his self-confidence at the young age. It was a manufacturing company. We didn't do very much design and engineering. But when I saw this engineering, I said, this is not a manufacturing business. This can be an engineering company with manufacturing as support. So I mentally just changed the business model to start focusing on engineering and design. Because I knew if you did that, you'd be solving people's problems. And that's exactly what's happened. We're the doctors of, of heat transfer in the United States today because of our ability to design and manufacture heat transfer products. But that's what was the most exciting for me when I started back then, to see this picture long term of where this thing could go. Dad did a good job guiding Carrie and I with our skill set and putting us in a position where if we ever did want to come into the business, that we would be adding value. And that was engineering, that was math related, that was leadership, that was you know getting an MBA, those expectations were laid out. And if you do all that, then I'll bring you in at some middle, middle level someplace to learn the business and then we can go on from there. Well, as luck would have it, both of them did that. They both got University of Michigan engineering degrees and then went back and got master's degrees. They wanted it to be their choice, but he had identified at a very early stage that they would have particular skills and that those two skills would um, complement each other, and I think they have. I was humbly nervous about coming into the company. Um, father, son, dad has high expectations. Uh, what do people think of me? How do I make my mark? Is this the right thing to do? Yeah, I was, I was nervous. And um, it turns out it was a really good move. He stayed on as chairman CEO. He made me president COO in 2006. And then for about three years, we went back and forth on me trying to build the team that I wanted without damaging some of the legacy and then the stuff that he built. And we worked on that hard together. Being able to work with my brother, being able to work with my dad, being able to work with the VPs that we've got, and even all the employees from you know purchasing through engineering and on the floor, it's great because people are happy. We all take care of each other. We all care about each other. What I love is the growth. You know, I love to see the business doing well. I love to see the business continuing to grow. And for us to figure out ways um, to keep that growth in a controlled manner um, so that we don't outstrip some of the other infrastructure that we've got. We've been able to really do a good job of staying ahead of that over the last 35 years. We just added a 60,000 square foot expansion to our Richmond, Virginia operation. Strategically, we're trying to stay ahead of as we grow and get bigger. 
I think it's important for people in the organization when we look to the future to understand that we want to maintain the family culture and the relationships matter and that people matter. And when you come to Super Radiator, no matter how big we get, that is something that we never want to lose. We've really grown the company over the last 35 years and it's been, uh, it's been remarkable. It's just morphed into something that's phenomenal. It's really fun and exciting. And, and the most fun for me personally is working with my son and my daughter. I mean, it's just, a, it's every man's dream.